Hey everybody, this is Mrs. Clark and I'm going to show you how to make this adorable pixel art. You can code it yourself so that you have your own questions and if people answer them correctly, this image appears. You can use this video to code your own artwork as well. It's a beginner video, but if you want this exact template to make it even easier on yourself, click on the link in the description below. It'll look just like this and we can code it together. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is come up to this percentage and change it to 75 so I can see everything on my screen. Next, I'm going to write my questions and I'm going to answer them. You can write by clicking and typing in the box. So go ahead now and write your questions and you can answer them as well. Now let's talk about the coding. We are only actually going to write nine codes one for each of these answer boxes. So you don't need these anymore and we're not actually writing codes for these boxes. We're just coding the answer box. When we code, we're going to tell the computer three things. First, we'll tell it the column of the box that we're coding. Then we'll tell it the row of the box we're coding. That's so it knows what box we're talking about. And then lastly, we'll tell it what number or word needs to be in that box for the code to work. In other words, the answer to our question. Let me give you an example. I need to tell the computer the column and row of this box. This box is column B, rows four, five, six, and seven, but for the code, you use the first one. So four, B four. And then I need to tell the computer the answer is nine. This one is column B, row eight, and the answer is two, this one is column B, row 12, and the answer is February. And that's what the code has in it, column, row, answer. Now let's actually look at that code. It's down here. I suggest writing it down on a piece of paper. The code is equals dollar sign column, dollar sign row equals answer. For this one then, the code would be equals dollar sign B, dollar sign four equals nine. This one would be equals dollar sign B dollar sign eight equals two equals dollar sign B dollar sign 12 equals February. So that's what the code looks like. You also want to make sure that you know what color you want to use. We're using colors from this uh, picture. So before you do your code, you just want to make sure you've chosen the color that you're interested in doing. So let's say I wanted to do this dark brown here. I always want to make sure I know where to find that. All right, so now we're actually ready to start coding. You're going to click on the box you actually want to code, which is always going to be one of these. So click on this box and open up the coding window. Come up to format. If you don't have this window, click there and click on conditional formatting. All right, when we code, we're gonna start at the bottom. So come down to the paint bucket and we're gonna tell the computer what color we wanna use. And it needs to be a color from the picture. I was just looking at that dark brown, otherwise I might not know how to find it, but you can always kind of click and find it and click back on the box you're coding. It's the fourth one in under custom. That's the color I'm starting with. That's the color I want it to turn. Now I'm going to write the code. To do that, click here, scroll all the way down to custom formula is. In the box below, you're going to click and we're going to type in our code. Equals dollar sign B, that's the column, dollar sign four, that's the row, equals nine, that's the answer. So we told the computer what box it was, B, four, and that the answer needed to be nine. Keep this window open, but I'm gonna close it just to show you real quick, technically this code is actually done told the computer if there's a nine in that box, turn it dark brown, and it did that. So the code does work. But we also are going to add on some of the dark browns from the picture so that they will also change color too. To do that, come up here and click apply to range, select data range. A window pops up, slide it over, and I'm going to start selecting some of the dark browns from the picture. But first, I need to hold down the control button on my keyboard. It's usually in the corner. Um, if you're on a Mac, hold down Command, and then start clicking. 
and I'm just going to select some of the dark browns from the design. The reason I'm holding down control is because as I add each pixel, I don't want it to replace the ones I just clicked on. Holding down control lets you select a bunch of different color or a bunch of different pixels that, in a group and it adds them all in as you go. The reason I'm not doing all the dark brown is because I have nine questions to get through but only five different colors. So I need to split up a few of those colors to make the picture last. Notice that first box is still selected. I need that one in there. So if, that, if you lost that one, click on it and make sure it's in there. All right, lifting up on control, and now I need to do three steps. First, I need to say OK on the range. Then I need to say done on the code. Step three is easy to forget, but it's super important. Come up to the paint bucket and click reset. Now everything's still selected, so just click somewhere else. And now we can test it. Click on the nine box, hit delete or backspace, and it disappears. Put the nine back in or whatever your answer was, click off of it, and the colors come back. Don't keep them there because you want to be, uh, you don't want to get confused about what you've already coded, but you can see that the code is still there, which is great. Now moving on to our second one. I'm going to do some, not all, but some of this cream color. So I like to click and just see where it is. There it is. And now I have to remember to click back on the box I'm actually coding, which is the answer box. I'm going to click add another rule. Or if you lost this window, just get back into it the same way we did before. And we'll do it all over again. Bottom to top. First, tell the computer what color you want it to turn. Next, click here and go all the way down to custom formula is. Here we'll write our code telling them the column and row of this big box and that the answer needs to be two. Equals dollar sign B, that's the column. Dollar sign eight, that's the row. Equals two, that's the answer. Code is technically done, but we want to add on some of the pixels from the picture. Click apply to range, slide it over. Notice that two box is still selected. Hold down control so you don't lose anything. And just start selecting some of this color, but not all of them because we have a lot of questions to get through. We don't want to use up all our colors too soon and have our coffee appear on like question six. Okay, lift up on control. And remember there's three steps. Hit okay on the range, done on the code, and reset the paint bucket. Click off of it. Come back and hit backspace on that too or delete. And now you can test them both. You have to click off of it for the color to reappear. Great, delete the two and nine so that it doesn't confuse us on what we've already coded. And you can see on the right hand side there that the codes exist. Coming in, we'll do February. So taking a look at this, we still have five colors here and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, left. So I'm gonna keep doing um, just like half of a color. I'm not going to do the full colors till I have five left over. And then when I have five questions and five colors, I can do it all. So for example, let's say I wanted to do the black, I would still do about half of it. So let's do the black. Click add another rule, come down, tell it what color you want it to turn. You can also change the font color if you want to. In this case, I think I need to because otherwise we can't see it. So click on text color and I can actually change it to white so you can see February. That's optional. Let's write our code now. Custom formula is equals dollar sign B, that's the column, dollar sign 12, that's the row, equals February. I wanna show you something. Did you notice that the color went away? It's because the code is incorrect. February is a word and you have to do something extra if your answer is a word, you need to put quotation marks around it, just like dialogue in a book. That turns black again to show me it's right. If your answer is a number, like two or three, you don't need quotes. If your answer is a word like February, put quotes around it. Now come up to apply to range and we will select half of the blacks because we still have more than five questions and only five colors. If you click on something you didn't mean to, like I did there, just click on it again. And I was holding down control this whole time. I'll make sure that box is still selected. And now I'll lift up on control and do my three steps. Okay. Done and reset the paint bucket. Click off of it and then we'll test it. 
Especially when you're starting out, it's good to always test it every time. Because then if there is something you missed, you'll, you'll notice right away. I have six questions left in five colors. So the next color I do, I'll split it up a little bit. I'm going to do this regular brown. It's present here on like the coffee sleeve, a little bit here in the shadows, and then it's also in the words. And let me actually find that color. There it is. Third from the right under custom. Click on the box you're actually coding, which is that one, and click add another rule. Third from the right. Yep. Okay. Let's write our code telling the computer the column and box of that, or column and row of that box equals dollar sign B, dollar sign 16 equals quotation marks, Mercury. There's our code. And now we'll apply it to our range, selecting about half of these light browns. In the words, if you accidentally pick one of those dark browns and make it this regular brown color, or it's hard to see the shading, it's not that big of a deal because it's just for artistic purposes and it's still going to look like a coffee cup. If you have trouble seeing the difference in the browns, then don't worry too much about what is what. I'm selecting about half of these. And now I'll lift up on control. See that mercury box is still in there, that's good. And I'll do my three steps, okay? Done. And reset. Okay. Now, I have five questions left and five colors left. That means that for each one of these, I'll do all of the colors. So for example, on my next one, I'm going to do this light brown. And I'm going to do all of the light brown. And then on the next one, I'm going to do the cream. And I'm going to do all of it. So that once we get down to the bottom, the whole thing should have disappeared. I'm going to speed up the video now. And I'm going to continue coding. And then we'll check in at the end and see how it looks. I left some pixels behind, so I want to show you now how you can easily go back through and add those in. Let's start with this darkest brown. All you need to do is click through these until you find the darkest brown. It should pop up over there on the code. You could add it to this one or that one. Those are your dark browns. Open the code up and click apply to range and click add another range. Hold down control and just select the pixels that got left behind. Okay, done and reset. There you go. Let's do it with this light brown. Click through these until you find the code that matches that light brown. There it is. Open the code, apply to range, and click add another range, hold down control, and add those in. That's how you add in anything that's been left behind. And now we're ready because there's nothing left on the screen. And if you cycle through these, you can see on the right all those codes pop up, which is great. But I'm going to close this window for now. Let's put our answers in and see how it looks.
And there's our finished artwork. I want you to know that coding can be hard at first, so it's very normal if you leave pixels behind or make any mistakes. This video right here, you can find it on my channel or here. It's called Pixel Art Common Mistakes and How to Fix Them. And it will help you if you made any mistakes with your pixel art. And I hope that you have fun with this project. Click on the link below if you want to get this exact template and have fun with it.